Hi booktube, Lynette here again and in this video I'm going to talk to you about the first six books that I read in May. I'm going to split the May wrap up into two videos again because I actually managed to complete 12 books despite going back to work just over, just under halfway through the month. The month didn't start out too well unfortunately. I'm not in terms of reading, I was still reading a lot but in the actual book that I was reading it wasn't too good. The beginning of the month was the second half of the week that Romanceopoly were running a readathon, and the first book that I completed was Lost in Paradise by Rachel Lacey and unfortunately I gave this book two stars. Lost in Paradise is a female female romance and it centres around characters Nicole and Fiona who have separately gone on a Mediterranean cruise and met while on the cruise. The cruise is subsequently hijacked and it's how their <clears throat> romance starts from there. Fiona and Nicole manage to hide from the hijackers and escape uh, from the cruise ship on one of the ship's lifeboats. From there they manage to navigate towards a remote island. Uh, it's one of the remote Greek islands and they are stranded there for a few days. While they are stranded there, they act on their attraction for each other and that takes up about the first half of the book. The second half of the book is what happens after they're rescued and how they uh, rebuild their relationship because one of them isn't too happy about carrying on. Um, they're a loner and they really don't think that actually the other one really wants a relationship with them. Um, the reason I gave this two stars is not because it's LGBTQI. Uh, uh, I quite enjoyed that part of it, which surprised me actually, because uh, LGBTQI books, plus books, are not actually my go-to genre. Um, and I, I, I've read a couple of male-male books before and I've always enjoyed them a bit more than the odd female-female book that I've read. Um, I don't know why but this book it was just the the premise of the story was really good and I really liked the idea of it behind it um but the execution left something to be desired and by the end of it I was reading it just to get to the end of it um because I don't like to DNF books but I do um but this one I just I couldn't do it I had to read to the end I had to know how it all worked out uh but I just, I don't know. I think Rachel Lacey is probably not an author I'll seek out again in future. Um, but it has made me open to the idea of more female-female romance, male-male romance in the future. The second book that I finished in the month of May is Reclaiming the Wolf by Jessie Donovan. Again, this was for the Romanceopoly Readathon. And this romance is book number one in Jessie Donovan's Cascade Shifters series. This book is about Kaya and Silas. Kaya is a wolf shifter and Silas is a cougar shifter. They were sweethearts when they were in their teens. Unfortunately Silas broke Kaya's heart after promising to not do that and she hasn't seen him since. Silas returns to Kaya's pack with a dead wolf uh, the wolf has been infected with a virus which spreads rapidly um, through the wolves and Kaya and Silas have to work together to find the cause of the virus and a vaccine. Obviously there's lots of tension that comes from this and eventually they give in to their feelings again. Silas desperately wants to win Kaya back. Uh, he knows he did wrong in the past and he wants to make up for that and he wants to prove that he is the mate for Kaya. Uh, the storyline was really good, I really enjoyed it. I actually gave this book four stars and I really enjoyed it. There was, I like the way Jessie Donovan writes her plots. Uh, the, the romance isn't the main focus, the plot isn't the main focus, they just mesh together very very well and I really enjoy her writing style. Uh, I've mainly read her Dragon series but I wanted to branch out and read some of her other books as well uh, because she feels they don't kind of get the love that her Dragon Shifters do. 
so I wanted to reach out and read them, more of them so I would have a more rounded opinion of her writing style and this book didn't disappoint and I look forward to reading the next book and the rest of the books that she's written in this series in the future. So the third book that I finished in the month of May is Haunted by the King of Death by Felicity Heaton and I gave this book three stars so again quite a nice finish to the Romanceopoly readathon that I was doing right at the beginning of May. I thoroughly enjoy Felicity Heaton's writing. Uh, it doesn't appear so when I've only given this one three stars but I think that's more just a case of because this series it's actually book 11 I think I can't remember if it's book 10 or 11 in a series that now has 18 books in it and they've become quite formulaic and that is her Eternal Mate series. This book centres around Grave who is a vampire and Isla who is a phantom. Many many years ago Isla uh, was made solid so that she could exact her revenge on Grave because he was responsible for the death of her sister's husband and Grave is now doomed to become a phantom himself and also because of the way the spell works if he becomes a phantom then they will both fade to nothing. They both have to work to find a sorcerer who can put this right. Unfortunately the sorcerer that they find also wants to take Isla prisoner and use him use her for his own ends. In the process of this uh, the two of them have been falling in love uh, over the century that they have been linked uh, because of Isla's revenge. Isla has seen things of Grave that she didn't really want to see and vice versa. Uh, but they learn to love, they learn to trust and in the end obviously they have a happy ever after um, and things do get resolved. I do enjoy Felicity Heaton's writing. I just feel that this series has become a bit formulaic so whereas I binge read the, fir the first few books in the series I am at the point now where I pick one up and then I leave it for a few months before I picking up the next one in the series. They are a series of standalones. There is a thread linking through them all um, which is just basically the world that they inhabit but there isn't really anything other than that linking them all together. Uh, so I'm not really fussed about reading it because there isn't anything pulling me from book to book to get them finished, to get this series up to date and finished. Uh, so I don't know when I'll be reading the next one in the series at the moment but three stars. I do recommend Felicity Heaton if you want to try some fantasy romance uh, because she she does write very well. Uh, I just find sometimes it becomes formulaic and I, I do recommend you start with the Her Angel series rather than the Eternal Mate series. The fourth book I finished in the month of May was the first book on my May TBR proper and that book was Ceremony in Death by J.D. Robb. This is the fifth book in the In Death series which follows Eve Dallas who is a detective with the New York Police Department and her husband Rourke and their found family that they have through mm -hmm. Eve's uh, colleagues in the police department. In this story Eve has to uncover the killer which is all based around a satanic cult. Uh, a colleague of Eve's is murdered uh, although it doesn't appear to be murder at first again it appears to be a suicide which is kind of following on from the last book it, it was a theme that she carried um, through from book to book um, but this one doesn't carry on in that vein. It does quickly become plain that it is a murder and Eve has to find the killer. There are other ways that she is drawn into this investigation. Um, one of her colleagues is implicated and this is someone she would normally lean on quite heavily to help her with the investigation. So she has to exclude them from it. So there's a lot more going on with the personal relationships in this story because there's lots of things that drive people apart as well as then bring them back together. Again, thoroughly enjoyed it. I gave it four stars and I'm looking forward to moving on to book six in the month of June. 
So the fifth book that I finished in May is Kane's Reckoning by Sarah McCarty and I did give it four stars. This was my second attempt at reading uh, historical fiction set in the American Midwest. In this case it's set in Texas. The book is about Kane who is a Texas Ranger and he is part of the Hell's Eight group of Texas Ranger and this series is actually called the Hell's Eight series and it's the first book in the series. Kane is sent to rescue some women who have been kidnapped from a local town and one of those women turns out to be a young woman called Desi who the town consider to be a woman of disrepute. Uh, Desi is quite a feisty character and when Kane comes across the group uh, she's actually fighting off one of the kidnappers uh, and she makes she's making a very good job of it. This impresses Kane um, and he and a couple of his other rangers with him obviously uh, then rescue the women and start on the process to take them back to town. Kane makes some realisations about Desi and when he gets back to town he realises that actually she's not the woman of disrepute that the other ladies in the group would have them believe and he chooses to actually rescue Desi again from the rest of the town and from there it's about how they learn to love and trust. Uh, this book was picked for Passion Place on the Romanceopoly board which was to read a book with an erotic BDSM feel to it so the sex in this book is actually quite, um, it's not vanilla let's put it that way, uh, it's quite enjoyable. I had a couple of issues around the beginning of the physical relationship, I felt that it could have been handled a little bit better um, in terms of the writing and the characters uh, and eventually Desi started to get on my nerves because it was quite clear that she didn't want to hold back from Kane but she was holding back from Kane and it just got a bit repetitive and I got a bit annoyed and that's why I knocked off one of the stars but I did actually really enjoy it uh, they were a great couple Desi was so feisty and fearless and she was so determined to look after herself. She was actually a great match for Kane, who is a hardened Texas Ranger, used to living in um, the wilds of Texas, uh, only a couple of hours from town rather than right on the outskirts of town. And I really enjoyed it. Um, in fact, he's quite a softie at heart and all he wanted was for Desi to realise that she had a home and that he wasn't going to let anything bad happen to her. Uh, I did also one of the reasons I knocked off the star was the ending. Um, Desi is kidnapped again towards the end of the book and we know this is coming, it's built built up to right the way through the book. Um, and you you do see the ending of the book from Desi's point of view but there's, there wasn't quite enough from Kane's point of view for me. Um, so I could have done with a bit more of the, the gunfight part of it being told rather than just you desi hearing things happening off in the distance um and then canes appeared and you know everything everything's right with the world uh, but yes i probably will carry on with this series at some point uh i've added it to my list of ongoing series or series that i've started that i want to continue so at some point you never know you might see another of these books in my wrap-ups and the final book that I'm going to talk about in this video is the sixth book that I finished and again this was a Romanceopoly book and it was for drive-in movie uh, and the prompt for this one was to read a book where one of the main characters is a film star. For this book I read The Controversial Princess by Jodie Ellen Malpass. I picked this book up about a month or so ago I uh, think probably during April, she actually put the book on sale um, and advertised it was on sale and I follow her on social media. Um, even though I've only ever read the This Man series by her and I think The Protector and I only read The Protector because it was made into a film by a company called Passion Flicks who I also subscribe to. Um, so I wanted to read it beforehand but Jodie Ellen Malpas, she's an author, like I say, I read the This Man series when they came out uh, because books like that were being recommended to me at the time but I never really moved on to anything else so 
when I saw that this one was just a duology and that it was on sale I wanted to actually pick it up and give it a go and see whether because initially I wasn't sure about her writing style I enjoy it I so the this man series wasn't although I think I rated it highly at the time because of the type of books I was reading it was quite good out of all of those uh, having read more books knowing now that they're her early books I probably wouldn't rate them quite as highly as I did back then uh, but the protector I rated a bit higher I saw improvement in the writing style so I thought this is a more recent book so again than the protector so I thought I'd give that one a go as well but the controversial princess is about uh, princess Adeline who is not the goody goody two shoes that her family want her to be uh, but because of this she's actually quite beloved by the public uh, this is loosely um set in well it's not loosely set in the uk it's set in the uk it's set as though it's the uk monarchy but it's not really based around the uk monarchy they are she's just uh taken what she knows of a monarch <clears throat> of a monarchy and use that to base the story around so yes so adeline as the title suggests is a controversial princess because she's not shy of controversy and at her birthday party she meets an actor Josh and initially I didn't think I was going to like this book I did not like the way they met um, I liked the party part of it but then they snuck off on their own and what happened from there I wasn't too sure about I felt that there were problems consensual problems um, but from there it got better and I'm glad to say that I gave this book four stars in the end and I really need to find a reason to pick up book two I don't think it'll be in June um, maybe July I can do that but I did really enjoy it uh, they started a relationship but they had to keep it secret and it's about little things that maybe Adeline doesn't understand because she's been sheltered from it um, so Josh has to rescue her at least once from the reporters and crowds. And then there's a tragedy that hits which changes Adeline's entire future. Uh, so it's how they start to tackle that. Um, it doesn't end well. Like I say, it's book one of a duology. So there is a small clip small cliffhanger at the end but also they have to face up to the fact that they cannot be together uh, so like I say I'm really looking forward to reading book two because I want to see how this plays out by the end of the book I was reading for them to be together I really like them as a couple and I felt that Jodie had managed to sort out all the problems that I felt affected the beginning of the book and maybe think about whether I really wanted to read it or not so that was the first six books that I read in May. Um, I'm going to film a second part of this to talk about the books that I read during the rest of May. I do want to just talk about one book though that although it's right at the end of May that I made the decision I want to talk about it now and that is David Copperfield. I have decided to DNF this book at only 30 pages in. Uh, please don't tell my nephew we're trying to tell him that he needs to read a lot more than a few pages of a book before deciding that he doesn't want to read any more of it um, but yes I just I was finding it so difficult to pick up and I was actually struggling with Dickens writing style I did read David Copperfield when I was about nine nine ten years old um, and I think maybe the problem as well is there were some th adult themes in this that I didn't pick up on as a child because they weren't something I was ever exposed to or would understand that having started to read it in this book I, I just couldn't get on with it and I really made me not want to pick it up and keep reading I didn't want to find out what happened to David I know it all ends well for him in the end I've read it before I've vaguely seen an adaptation on TV but unfortunately, yes, I have decided to DNF and 
remove it off my to be read pile i hope that you had a good reading month in may let me know down in the comments uh, if you like this video please like and subscribe and i will speak to you all again soon bye